Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. A while ago we did something highly unusual and praised the anime for the times when its adaptation actually managed to surpass that of its source material. But this week we are going to be zeroing in on the exact opposite and taking a look at the much more common scenario, which is when the anime utterly fails. The criteria for this list is exactly the same as the previous, quite simply the events covered must have occurred both in the anime and the manga, so that we have a source of comparison. Very, very notably for this list, that means that no filler arcs will be covered here or filler material in general, which is great because otherwise this list would be full of them. Also we'll only be looking at the straight up Toei adaptation of the anime, so we won't be counting the failures on the part of special episodes or dubs such as Funimation or ugh, for kids. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top 5 times the One Piece anime failed. Number 5. Boa Hancock kicks Smoker. All right, this first one is going to seem really nitpicky, but just bear with me while I get this off my chest. I'm sure that there are literally hundreds of moments more disappointing than this, but one of the very first things that comes to mind when I think of Toei's failures is the piss poor kick against Smoker. Now let's be fair, this is not some grand moment in the manga. It's a panel of Boa's leg making a sweeping motion, a sign of impact, and Smoker's body being flung backward unceremoniously, as if he took a strike of some actual substance. It's not the best piece of action, but it's not the worst either. It gets the job done effectively, and it's in chapter 559 if you want to check it out. Cut to the Marineford anime adaptation, and that effective sweeping motion turns into a disembodied leg, appearing from off screen, casually prodding Smoker in the head, resulting in an exceptionally unsatisfying impact that we are supposed to take seriously. This... This is not how legs work. They don't just extend forward unless you're Luffy, I guess. But for regular people, legs need to bend or sweep to produce some sort of force. I just... Uh, it was just a pathetic effort that turned a fairly competent panel in the manga into a piece of utter trash in the anime. Number 4. The Big Mom Chase Sequence at the time of this recording, we are well into the escape of Whole Cake Island portion in the anime, and good God, is it abysmal. Now, once again, to be fair, the manga had problems when it came to this part as well. Quite specifically, it had difficulty sustaining the pure adrenaline being put forward in this lengthy chase. The anime has the exact opposite problem, failing to generate even a drop of adrenaline while the Straw Hat crew are being chased by quite possibly the strongest human on the planet. How does it do this? By removing any semblance of speed. Big Mom moves like a lumbering drunkard searching for a bush to piss in, while the Straw Hats periodically get interrupted by fodder groups of enemies to dispose of. In the manga, Big Mom was swift and deadly, giving you the impression that if the Straw Hats lost even a second, everything would be over. Meanwhile, the anime gives you the impression that if the Straw Hats stopped and just had a picnic, Big Mom still wouldn't catch them. It is an abysmal effort that actively works against the initial intent of these chapters, and as a result, it's not only boring as hell to watch, but it makes even the canon material feel utterly pointless. Number 3. Rebecca's Repeated Flashback So the flashback featuring Rebecca and Kiros was never one of my favourites to begin with. It was a touching little story with some nice character moments. Great, I'm glad I read it. Let's move on. And apparently the anime disagreed with this assessment. In fact, Toei thought this story was so brilliant that it needed to be shown again and again at every conceivable moment during the Dressrosa arc. Toy soldier Kuros is going up against Gladius. Well shit, we can't extend that action out to cover a whole episode, so let's show the flashback again to remind everybody that Rebecca is his motivation. Oh and look, now Sugar's curse is broken. Instead of having Rebecca just state she remembers her father like in the manga, we'd best play the whole flashback again, just to make extra sure that people understand that this is emotional. Time to face off against Diamante. Better water this down with some Rebecca flashback. Frankie activates nipple lights. Cut to Rebecca flashback. Dolphamingo defeated. Rebecca flashback. Zo, Rebecca flashback. Wedding cake. Rebecca flashback. Rebecca, 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 In fact, here we have the official dress rosa breakdown, and roughly 90% of its 118 a lot of episodes, consists of simply repeating this flashback, and yes, that's hyperbole, but my god and L, that's how it felt every time we were subject to a repeat viewing of this portion of the story in what were allegedly new episodes. But sadly, that's not even the worst that the Dressrosa arc had to offer. Number 2. King Kong Gun 
Sticking with the Tress Rosa motif, next up we have the final attack used against Don Quixote do Flamingo, which acts as a brilliant metaphor for the entire anime adaptation of the Dress Rosa arc. I really need to emphasize how this played out in the manga, which was Luffy throwing his punch and instantly shattering Doflamingo with overwhelming power, sending him flying towards defeat. It was such a good punch. But in the anime, rather than having a fast paced powerful punch, we get a watered down contrived clash that completely removes any satisfaction gained from finally seeing the punch land. And that's because from the moment Luffy throws the punch, it takes a whole minute and 37 seconds to finally smack Doflamingo in the face. And if you don't think that's a long time, then I challenge you to go and punch a wall right now and then wait exactly one minute and 37 seconds with a completely serious look on your face before you take your hand away. It's ridiculous, especially considering everything anime watchers would have had to suffer through to get to this point, because just what is their reward? A lackluster final clash that doesn't even come close to doing Luffy, Doflamingo, or the Dressrosa arc any justice whatsoever. Number one. The Davy Back Fight. Look, I know I said I wasn't going to include filler arcs, but Long Ring Long Land, despite being canon, comes very close to being considered a filler arc in the anime, and we can't not touch it. You'd never know it if you weren't a manga reader, but Long Ring Long Land is indeed a canon arc. However, with one big difference, being that in the manga, it wasn't a butchered piece of crap. Toei saw a golden opportunity for filler in the concept of the Davy Back Fight, which in the manga consisted of a single contest with three rounds. The Donut Race, the Groggy Ring, and Combat. It was quick, hilarious, and a nice break from super serious events. But the ever elongating anime adaptation gave us a Davy backfight not once, not twice, but thrice, leading to characters and situations that work in very small doses, being handed to incapable writers, resulting in a shit pile. As such, the Long Ring Long Land arc is quite literally half filler. And I'm not talking about the slow paced extended crowd shot filler, I mean Toei original garbage. But to make it even worse, these filler games were Frankensteined with the original games, meaning that we never even got to see the complete Davy backfight as it was meant to appear. And as with everything else on this list, it was just a completely abysmal failure. And that pretty much does it for the top five times the One Piece anime failed. If you somehow enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way keen on supporting this independent channel, then please do check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. And finally, please do comment with your own list of One Piece anime failures. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.